Chaos Cultists are that ever useful cheap and disposable unit that's great for holding those backfield objectives or just acting as a meat shield to soak up fire that would otherwise have been directed to your more valuable units. The Iron Warriors really take this ethos to heart and deploy their cultists in the most grueling, arduous and dangerous jobs going. However, to represent these downtrodden ranks, we only have a limited number of options. Unless, of course, we do some conversion work, which is exactly what I'll be doing in this video, as I show you how to convert Iron Warrior cultists. I imagine the Iron Warriors cultists to be less brainwashed followers and more cybernetically modified slaves. Constructed to act much like servitors, these cultists will be put to use simply as weapons or tools, depending on what their Iron Warrior masters needed. To represent this, the best basis for our conversion are the Arco Flagellants kit from the Sisters of Battle range. These are perfect for representing that idea of cybernetic augmentation being made to humans to form them into a specific battlefield role. They also come in boxes of 10 and can be found for around 25 to 30 pounds, which makes them just about cheap enough to field in larger numbers. So, begin by assembling your Arco Flagellant, ignoring any obviously Imperial parts the kit may have, so that you have at least the legs and the torso assembled. The standard Arco Flagellant comes with two close combat weapons attached to each of their arms. However, our cultists can only be equipped with auto guns or auto pistols and a close combat weapon. Luckily for us, the cybernetic arms simply allow us to graft these weapons directly to the existing prosthesis. Begin by carefully cutting one of the close combat weapons away from the arm, using some clippers, making the cut at the wrist joint before cleaning it up with a file or a knife. If you make sure that you remove the flail carefully, then you can keep the weapon in your bits box for later use. Next, we need to choose a suitable weapon. The Stub Carbine from the Sicarian Infiltrators Kit works particularly well for this and is what I'm using here, but you can have access to any number of various weapons and pistols from any number of kits. We want to make a vertical cut just above the trigger guard. How you do this is up to you, but once the cut is made, you need to once again clean up the joint with a knife or a file to ensure that a flat, smooth surface that you can use to glue the, to the arm that we've already prepared. Once this is complete, you can then continue the assembly of the rest of the Arco Flagellant. With the model assembled, you can use it as it is, but we need to chaosify the model a little more to help further distinguish it from the Imperium's Arco Flagellant. Chaos Space Marines are often referred to as spiky marines, so if we stick spikes to our flagellant, then logically he must be a follower of chaos. Now the spikes you choose are really up to you as they are plentiful among Chaos kits. Some, like these ones here, can be found as components from the kit, like the old Chaos Warrior set, but they can easily be clipped off from one of the vast amounts of Chaos kits out there. Once you have selected your spikes, you just need to glue them to your miniature, placing them over the back and shoulders are good choices here, as this will help them to tie in to the next step too. To further distinguish our cybernetic cultists from the Imperiums, we're next going to add some chains to represent the enslaved aspect of the Iron Warriors, particular brand of cannon fodder. The chain I'm using here is from Zinj Industries and is the ideal size for miniatures of this scale. The first step is to choose a starting point for the chain. Around the waist is a good place. Apply a small drop of super glue and place the chain into the glue. Hold this in place for a little while to allow the glue to dry. Once dried, you can then begin to wrap the chain around the torso and waist in whatever way works best for your particular model. Once you are happy with how the chain looks, you can then clip it to the desired length. Pulling the chain taut, you can then glue one end in place with some more super glue to ensure that it stays fixed. This can be repeated across various points along the chain. You can also use the technique to make sure that the end of the chain flicks out to suggest movement of the model. Continue to apply small amounts of glue until the chain is no longer loose, as this will make it much easier to paint later on. The final task is a very simple one, and it involves dipping into one of the most valuable kits in the Converter's arsenal, the Citadel Skull Set. Take a skull from this set and clip, trim, or file down the back part of it so you have a little less skull. You can then glue this flat part to the waist of your cultus, and it won't stick out quite as much as it would have done without the trimming. 
Adding a skull in this way, or any other chaos related paraphernalia for that matter, is a simple way to add a little individualism to your cultists. And here we have the fully painted Iron Warrior cultist, so you can see what the miniature would look like once completed. The intention of this video was to create a fairly simple conversion that could create a recognizable Iron Warriors cultist that could both be easily recreated en masse without the need for too many extra parts or steps. If you enjoyed this Chaos Cultist conversion video, then do be sure to check out my previous Emperor's Children guide and let me know which Legion or God-specific cultists you'd like to see me try out next. If you're looking to recreate this conversion, then you'll probably want to buy yourself a box of Arcoflagellants and Skulls and just get the individual stub carbines from Bits resellers. I personally recommend Bits Box as I've used them in numerous conversions and they've helped me out a good number of times as well. For your kits, however, you will want to check out Firestorm Games using my affiliates link in the description below. Any products you buy after using that link will send a little bit of money my way, which I can put directly into producing these videos. And finally, let me just say an absolute huge thank you to the guys who support me on Patreon. Your continued patronage really does help me with the cost of producing these videos. If you'd like to lend me a hand, I've included my Patreon page in the description below, where you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month. And so, the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching, and goodbye.